Hello everybody, hello fam, uh, to everyone. Uh, first of all, uh, good day. Hope everything in your week is going as planned. Uh, remember what I always tell you, no matter what you're going through, no matter where you're at at the moment, if it's not where you want to be and you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. Also, I want to remind you uh, to support the work that we're doing at the Odyssey Project. What I'm about to share with you is going to be a testament of just how important the work that we do at the Odyssey Project is on a number of different levels. Um, second of all, if you haven't um, signed up to sponsor a space in my 25th book, uh, Chasing the Ghost, The Quest for Black Wealth, you do so now. Uh, it's it's a it's simple. It's a way for you to literally uh, memorialize someone that you hold in high regard, someone who's had a positive impact on your life for whatever reason, teacher, mentor, parents, grandparents. Uh, it's a way to sit up and actually do that. I uh, set it up to where there is no minimum uh, for you to sponsor. If you donate, well, it's not really donating, it's sponsoring. If you sponsor with 50, 50 cents, your name will be in the book and you will be allowed to write a paragraph about the person that you want to uh, memorialize. Okay, with that out of the way, and the information for both, how to support the work we do and to sponsor a space in the book is in the description box. Uh, so make it happen. Um, show some love. On that note, I want to get into the reason I'm here. Uh, a young lady by the name of Kashan Ashley Sims also goes by the name of Cookie. Uh, she is currently missing from the Los Angeles, California area. She is 30 years old. Uh, last seen September 8th. Um, she's 5'1", 120 pounds. Um, she is a professional fitness instructor, a personal trainer. Uh, which sort of gives me some sense of connectivity uh, with my history in that field. Uh, but just first and foremost, this is another black woman missing. And we've seen far too much of that in just recent months of young black bodies being recovered after young black females go missing. And we know uh, from the history that uh, we, we, we pointed this out years and years ago, uh, and definitely within the last five years, we pointed out that we are, uh, when I first started reporting on it, it was uh, approximately 64,000 black women missing in America. That number is now way up over 70,000 missing in America. Uh, it's a very silent uh, narrative, a very silent cry. Now, the reason that I am talking about this now is for a number of reasons. I get literally four or five of these a day that comes across my page and I share them uh, and I ask for uh, information. The reason I'm talking about this is because there is a new development that's not really new but that sheds some light on what's going on and it gives me a reason to talk about this on a more in-depth level. Uh, I have actually uh, received a link to her YouTube channel where I guess at some point she was promoting her her fitness business but in July she posts a video that talks about domestic abuse while pregnant and the primary focal point is her father who doesn't live with her but who has come over her house and um, assaulted her and I was asked by someone who's really uh, interested in the case and trying to figure out what's going on to evaluate her behavior in the video to find out how legitimate I believe the, the charges of domestic violence are and whether or not uh, she may be dealing with some type of psychosis or other type of mental illness. And so I did so. Um, I'm not going to go into detail with what I think or what I see. I'll let you review it uh, on your own. And I'm doing that because she posted it for people to see because her purpose for posting it was she was frustrated with the in 
the entire uh, uh, notion or entire frustration of, of the fact that it's not as easy for people who are suffering from domestic uh, violence to get the help they need. While there are some uh, relief and there are some things that you can do and there's some ready resources, she, feel, she feels or she felt at that time like it wasn't as easy as it should be that a whole lot can happen to a person by the time all of this stuff uh, or this processes uh, take hold and she feels like that should be more readily immediately available uh, means of getting relief from domestic violence now uh, what I will share with you and I, like I said I won't go into detail what I will share you, with you is based on body language uh, based on certain consistencies in her statement uh, there are two things that I come I could come to a conclusion on. First and foremost, there is a level of domestic abuse, um, and it is more than likely uh, taking place uh, over a prolonged period of time. It's not a one-time affair. It is something that is consistent. May even travel back uh, into her childhood, and most likely, it could even have been uh, precipitated in. CSA childhood sexual abuse. I can tell you that I believe that her mother was a silent uh, con con condoner, meaning that uh, she condoned the actions of her father by not doing anything about it. Uh, it's called silent condemnation. Uh, I believe that happened. I believe that because, uh, and here's the, here's the other revelation uh, or the uh, assessment is that I do believe that there are some mental issues. Now that could be from the stresses of being uh, being abused, uh, especially if there are sexual elements or components. Um, but I think because of her mental state, uh, she may be targeted by other members in her family. Um, and one thing that she does is she ends this video by saying, if something happens to me, you, you know where to look. Now, what that tells me, and then uh, sh the last time that uh, she supposedly seen is September the 8th. Uh, we don't know if she actually was missing before that, and that's the time that she was promoted missing, reported missing, or what. But what I can tell you is that when someone says, if something happens to me, uh, this person did it very rarely are those people suicidal they are afraid uh, and so uh, there's always exceptions to the rule but very rarely are those people suicidal when a person is telling you hey look if something happens to me you know they are afraid and, and, and they're reaching out they may not know how to reach out they may not be the best person and a lot of times their uh, behavior can be counterproductive or seem destructive but they're fighting from where they're at not where you're at not from your area of expertise not from your mental state but from where they're at and that's something you always have to remember when we're talking about victims victims are operating from their particular experiences they're operating from how they're living their life and if they have been traumatized then they are dealing with a bunch because now you're putting new uh traumatic episodes on top of traumatic memories. And when you talk about traumatic memories, you're talking about literally reliving the uh, experience. It's not a memory in the sense of recollection. When you recall a normal event, it's simply recalling the event, but it does not solicit the sensory uh, realities that took place. You don't recall the smell, the pain, the emotions, your heart doesn't start racing and all the other things. You literally, through traumatic memory, relive the experience in every way possible. You are literally replacing yourself there also with traumatic memory. The brain does not have the capacity to uh, isolate it and integrate it and categorize it as something of the past that's over and no more a threat. It's literally your body and your brain is literally responding to the recollection as if it's still a reality and still a threat. Uh, and so it's also a possibility that there's complex trauma. Uh, PTSD is normally from one experience, something that was so traumatic that it traumatized you, a horrible accident, uh, you know, being a part of a mass shooting, watching planes 
uh, fly into uh, the twin uh, the twin towers. Those are traumatic uh, events, uh, and you can end up with PTSD. Complex trauma is the stacking of trauma, multiple events, and it's likely that she's dealing with that. The reason I wanted to talk with you guys is, first of all, somebody knows something. So I want you guys to really, truly share this. I want you to share this, um, and, and, and especially if you know somebody in the Los Angeles area, share this. Somebody knows something. And my concerns are huge because she's been missing for such a long time. We're pushing on an entire month that she's been missing, and that doesn't bode well. But here, this is why I want to share it with you as well. We have a problem with both areas that are of concern to me by watching this video, which you'll get to see in a moment. The first thing is we have a problem with domestic abuse that we don't like to talk about. Uh, domestic abuse in the sense of uh, physical violence, domestic abuse in the sense of neglect and emotional uh, violence, domestic abuse in the sense of sexual violence and it's the elephant in the room that I've talked about so often that we love to sweep under the rug I told you this before that um, in the early 2000s uh, when I was doing work um, it was a point to where it felt like every black woman and some black men I want to be clear on that this is not just a black female thing this is a black male thing but black women the rate at which it happens is absolutely unbelievable um, it, it, it was almost like every woman who had ever been uh, abused as a child sexually abused as a child was coming to me I'm like D you know like am I the the mecca of you know of recovering or, or, or CSA uh, survivors you know eventually my wife makes her way to me uh, you know some years down the line but my wife who is also a survivor uh, makes her way to me and initially she was a client and then we worked together she moved on and then I, I made up my mind when I, I was working with my wife that at some point I was going to marry her I knew that wasn't the time I knew she still had healing I knew I had some growing uh, but I knew and when she came back around I, I snatched up uh, it's a little side note me and my wife never dated I mean I worked with her. I learned the kind of heart she had. I learned the type of person she was. I did everything I could to help her. I sent her on her way to finish her journey. Uh, but what she had to do, a year later she popped back up and within a week I told her I wanted to spend the rest of my life with her and I snatched up. Our first date was after we were married. Um, just a little side note. But back to uh, this situation. So I had to call a couple of other colleagues and I'm like, hey, dude, is it me or is every freaking black woman in America been abused? He said, he says, no, nah, man, I got the same phenomenon. If you go deep enough, if you peel those layers back, if you go deep enough and you develop the trust with your with your client and you go back deep enough, it comes up. And I don't do leading questions. I don't say, did somebody do this to you? Never a question I ask. I don't ask that because you can plant seeds. I ask questions that are open. Well, talk to me about this. Well, what happened then and what happened? And some of them come to you already ready to talk about it because they know it, they've dealt with it, they're tired of it, but they've been shamed by the family. They've been threatened by the family. They've been manipulated and ostracized by the family and they're overdone. But then there's some that have literally, as a mechanism of survival, hidden it so deep into their re the recesses of their mind that they don't even recall it. And you gotta uncover that. You gotta be careful how you do it. But what I'm saying is it's a problem. And also, out of that comes mental issues. You don't go through that without developing certain issues. And we have a problem in our community with mental health. Now. It's worse with men, but it's, it's still bad. Women, black women are the most likely to be diagnosed with clinical depression. Yet, they are also the most likely not to get treated for it. Now, uh, 
black men would probably be right up there with everything that we deal with, but we won't even talk about it. We won't even talk about it. We won't admit it because, see, we can't admit that we need help because then we will feel like we're not men because there's this broken narrative that real men don't need help. So we don't even want to talk about what we're going through. And that's why the suicide rate and suicide attempt rate is going up amongst black males, especially young black males. We got to talk about mental health. We got to talk about uh, a bunch of situations in our community. But again, why is it so difficult for someone who is in need of help to get it? Now, what I'm saying is I don't know all the challenges, so I can't speak on the totality of the experience of this young lady and what may lead to some of the things that she's experiencing. Uh, obviously, her interpretation of things is uh, something that I would love to know more about so that I can speak on it, but I'm not going to speak on it because I don't know. But definitely, uh, that may be a problem with processing. Um, and if that is the case, then that could be a problem and that could be a frustration for the family. But at the, at, at, at the end of the day, family is family. She's still a human being. She's still a young woman. She's still trying to make her own way shown by the fact that she's gotten qualified to be a personal trainer and she's working. So uh, sometimes people would do some pretty drastic things to keep family secrets. Just something to think about. And I would really love for the family to find a way to, you know, support and find out what's going on with her. Uh, I'm going to be on it because I was asked, um, you know, I've done what I was asked to do, but now I've picked it up. I've got to follow it through and I'm hoping not to get the same freaking results that I've, we've gotten so many times in the past year uh, when it comes down to these things. Um, every now and then we get the, 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 the storybook ending where everything turns out fine. They were just somewhere else. Or, uh, something you know crazy had happened and sometimes young 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 people uh, disappear on purpose good or bad don't want to be bothered or running away from something or whatever and they pop back up you know uh, might be mad at them the family might be mad at them but they're alive unfortunately that's not the norm and I'm really hoping I'm praying um, that uh, this baby is found and I know some people out there get upset when I call grown women babies. That's 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 something personal on there, and they need to deal with. Because at my age, my 36-year-old, which is my oldest, is she still my baby? Now she's married, got kids, got a husband uh, that holds her down, that I've entrusted with her life and her safety, but she's still my baby. Uh, she's his queen now, but she's still my baby. And so that's just the way I am when I see these young kids. I see them as so young, especially to be in the type of turmoil they're in. And so I see that, and you know, that's my thing. If people have a problem with it, that's them, they have a problem with it. I'm not even finna go any further on that. Um, also, there's a little bit more of a crazy story that I wanna want kinda talk about uh, now. I don't have the young man's name yet. Uh, I'm not sure if it's even written release but the stories that I've read to this point didn't show his name they just said he was 18 years old uh, I'm pretty sure by now you heard that there was a school shooting in the Arlington area which is between Dallas and Fort Worth and um, that the uh, alleged and I'm gonna use alleged uh, because they would do it for a white kid uh, the alleged uh, shooter is an 18 year old black boy and what they didn't tell in the initial uh, recounts of what happened is this wasn't your traditional shooting. In both instances, there have been two shootings uh, in the Texas area, one here in the Houston and one in Dallas over the last couple of weeks. And both have been black men. And both times before I ever knew anything about it, I called it. I say, this isn't a mass shooting. This is somebody shooting at somebody they want to get. And in both cases, it was. The, the one in Houston guy shot his way into the building by shooting a lock off of a door, went in, shot the person he wanted, threw the gun down, turned himself in. 25-year-old uh, former student. Uh, in the Dallas Arlington situation, kid had been bullied. 
They was taking his lunch money. You know, uh, taking his lunch money, jumping on him, bothering him. Mom had went up to the school. And, you know, I can go back to school and sort of remember how school is. And I know things are a lot different now with social media and everything else. Uh, bullying's at an uh, all-time high and a new level because everybody starts saying, man, you know, I never, ever, you know, everybody got bullied when we were growing up and nobody could kill themselves. Well, you didn't know whether somebody killed themselves or not because social media wasn't um, around then. And so you know everything that happens now. Every little situation is somewhere on social media. And if it's got enough bang to it, it'll get a boost and it'll take off and it'll be trending and it'll go viral and you'll know about it. Well, that wasn't the case back then, but things were different then. Uh, number one, a lot of things in the way we handle our kids now are different. A lot of things we allow our kids to be exposed to is different. Uh, we are not uh, un uh, closely enough involved in the development of our children. And so what they hold dear, what they hold precious, how they view themselves isn't really up to us anymore because we've, we've abdicated our roles of being label givers. We're not supplying our children with their image, with their self-concept, with who they are. They're being defined by what they see on social media. They're being defined by their peers. They're being defined by loose and unattainable narratives uh, that are constantly painted that they're pursuing and can't have and they're becoming frustrated with themselves. It's a deeper trench of self-hatred than we've ever seen before and it's leading to situations to where right now for the first time in history blacks are leading uh, in a suicidal statistical category and that suicide attempts and suicide uh, successful suicide in the age group of 5 to 11. Blacks are leading it. Black girls are topping it. Then next in the category, a young adolescent, males, teenage boys. It's, they're, they're, not at the, they're climbing that ladder. They're moving up in statistics. And then black men. So what happens is it comes to find out that he took a gun to school and got jumped again. And then he got his gun and he went to get the other person and start shooting and accidentally shot some other kids. And so people are asking, is that okay? Uh, I can't speak on that uh, from a legal perspective, but uh, they're probably going to say no. Uh, that under any circumstance he shouldn't have had a gun at school and a bunch of as a parent and a former kid I don't want anybody picking on my kid so I'm gonna do everything I can now me personally uh, if the school's not gonna do anything about it I'm gonna do something about it uh, and that could be a vast range of things that I'm not gonna speak on but I'm gonna do something about it because that's my kid, it's my responsibility to protect my kid. And see, what I would want to do is protect my kid from what happened here because now his life could just be totally ruined forever. You know, I, I would rather sacrifice mine, but you're not going to harm mine. Uh, you know, there's no level of attainment in this life I can achieve where the primitive instinct to protect is gone. There's no amount of money, there's no academic uh, level or degree there's absolutely no position you can give me where I'm gonna sit up and go man I can't ruin my position so my I don't know what my family no I will die for mine it's that simple and those who know me know Rick not Dr. Rick Wallace and they know that it's absolutely unacceptable and unacceptable that I'm sending my kid to a school and they can't be safe they, because number one is if they can't feel safe they can't learn if they can't feel safe it's going to start messing with their mental health if they can't feel safe it's going to create other issues that i'm going to have to deal with anyway in the future the one thing that my kids are going to know no matter how much i get on them no matter how much i'm challenging them no matter how much i'm holding them to a standard that they really don't feel like shooting for that when it boils down to it I got your back. I will burn somebody behind you and not even give it a second thought. I'm baby put some money on my books. And then I'm going to leave word with my older sons. 
take care of business while I'm gone. It's that simple. You've got to raise black men to be protectors, and you've got to protect these young kids long enough to grow up. If I say, well, he's 18. If you look at this little kid, he's a little kid. He's in the school, and he's trying to find himself. It looks, you know, from some of the things I've seen, he's trying to put on a tough facade. But obviously, he, he's been identified as a weak link or a weakling, and he's being attacked. And again, I, I, I don't know the whole story, and I don't, you know, I wouldn't want one of my kids getting killed by a kid that shows up, or, or nobody got killed, but I wouldn't want one of my kids getting shot by a kid that showed up to school. At the same time, I wouldn't want my kid getting bullied. So it's a lot of things that we need to really understand. Number one, these schools aren't designed to for us, first of all, they're, they're, they're trash regardless to who you are, but they suck when it comes to us. And so we need to talk about what we're going to do when it comes to honoring our responsibility to cover our kids. And this young lady I talked about, that, that the video you're about to watch, is living out now I hope she's still alive but has lived out all of that that looks like it originated in her childhood so again she wasn't protected we've got to develop in our men the desire to protect we've got to hold our men accountable we got to hold our women accountable for being so hooked up in the need for a man that will allow a man to harm their their, 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 their offspring, even if it's the biological father. You know, there's no maternal or paternal instincts in protecting. Everybody's worried about themselves. That comes from a life of being emasculated when it comes to men, abandoned when it comes to women, and feeling powerless in both instances so everybody thinks about themselves, how you make me feel, how it makes me feel. And it's real hard to live a life as a parent worrying about how you feel because if, if I dealt with my kids, sometimes how I feel, it would probably been an ugly thing for them. Not that I would have harmed them, but I would have cut them loose a long time ago. Because it's not always pretty, but that's not what it's about. It's about responsibility. Look, I could talk about this all day, but I just had to bring this out. I had to talk about it. Um, shoot, this part is actually longer than the, uh, the video you're going to watch that follows. But uh, pay attention to her. Watch her. Look at some of the things and understand that she's operating from where she's at, not where you're at. And try to see what's going on. Uh, but more importantly, share this, um, share this video with as many people as you can with hopefully we can find out what's happened to her and find her. Uh, that's the ultimate goal. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. Okay, so this really isn't a video that I truly wanted to record, but it's currently my life. So, um, I went to Miami for my birthday. I don't remember the last night. Like, literally, it's just erased from my fucking memory. But I came back pregnant, okay? And I told my family. Nobody gives a fuck. Um, and in result, like, I told my mom she didn't do anything. Um, and then they have been, they purposely put something in the living room and in the AC vents to cause me to have allergic reactions. So every single time I step out my room, I'm literally having an allergic reaction. And I have been hiding out in my room because I don't want to fucking encounter anybody. And for whatever reason, that alone is driving people up the wall. They're so mad that I'm in my room. So they're doing shit to get me to come out of my room to interact with them. And then when I don't give them anything, they bring my parents into it and then my dad gets abusive. So I don't even know what the fuck 
happened for my dad to come over the last time. But he popped up mad about God knows fucking what. And it was before 4th of July. And uh, attacked me. Like literally the day before 4th of July. Like smashed my head and all that shit. My mom was sitting right there. Didn't do a fucking thing. I'm not surprised. No. So, because I've been getting abused by him. Like it started when I was 16. He hasn't done, and she literally has done nothing about it. He's put our family through fucking everything a man could possibly do to women and a family. And she's stayed right the fuck there and is so excited and boasts about that stupid ass relationship. So, that happened. And then, literally, it was seconds before I told him I was pregnant. He didn't believe me. It was still aggressive. And then I fucking started crying as no one got up and left. Then the next day, he showed up to bring me food for 4th of July. And, like, almost was, like, trying to step into my room, happy as fuck, because we were going to have a conversation. I grabbed the food, said thank you, and closed it on his face. Because, like, did you forget what the fuck you did yesterday? And this entire time, for the last three months, I'm three months right now. The last three months, everyone's trying to convince me that I have mental issues, but there's text messages of him boosting me up and telling me that I can be the best entrepreneur that this family has seen, and then he's coming over and fucking abusing me. It's just like, <laughs> everyone's trying to convince me that I have mental issues, but literally everyone in my family is truly acting fucking mental. Like, truly acting fucking mental. So then yesterday, again, there's something in the fucking common area that they have done, like, sprayed. It literally smells, like, so strange. And, um, they put in the common area... And uh, there's a roach that they have left on the table like I'm supposed to give a fuck or care. I don't eat at that fucking table. So I don't give a fuck that that roach is there. I don't give a fuck that y'all have sprayed whatever the fuck it is you sprayed. I need to go into the kitchen, make my food, and come back into my motherfucking room. So everyone's doing everything they can to get me to acknowledge that stupid ass roach. And it's just like, y'all acknowledge it. The fuck are you, like, leave me alone. It's, like, it's literally all I've been wanting this entire time is for... My entire family to leave me the fuck alone because they're fucking wild and crazy and weird. So, when he comes over, oh, I open the window because I'm trying to let it air out because it literally is absolutely absurd and ridiculous. My sister keeps getting upset about the fact that I opened up the window, talking about she's not paying for the AC to get fixed. But I'm not going to air her out, but it's just like, girl... Okay, when the AC actually blew out during the summer, I was the one who called to get it fixed. Just like, what? You didn't pay for that? None of us did. The fucking landlord who we rent from paid for it because that's what when you're renting from somebody. The person who owns the building pays for it. Hello. So, <laughs> she just keeps walking around ranting about how she's not paying for shit. And it's just like... You don't pay for shit anyway, but whatever. So, she's yelling and screaming at 8 o'clock in the morning yesterday about the fact that the fucking window was open. Literally because the fucking window was cracked. She's screaming at my mom at 8 o'clock in the morning because the window's cracked. Because the window is cracked, okay? So then, my dad, oh, that was 8 o'clock in the morning. Damn near 12 hours later, 7 p.m. in the afternoon, because of the last time, I sleep my, I literally go to sleep with my door locked. Because it's just like, I'm not doing none of this shit. So I'm just popping up, opening up my fucking door. And just, no, I'm not doing it. I'm so not doing it. Because last time when he popped up with the food, for one, the time before that, popped up and just opened up my door and just like I'm here it's like nigga you don't live here before you just pop it over the fucking house and just opening up the fucking doors for it so yeah and then on uh 4th of July going back real quick 4th of July I mean um yeah 4th of July I just knocked at the door and I was just like 
what? Because it's like at this point, I'm, I've already been abused. I'm not talking to my sisters. Like, so she's like, who's not going to want to do it and for what? I was like, what? I'm not going to do it. What? The door opens and I'm sitting, I literally was laying down right here on my pregnancy pillow. I literally was laying down. And I sit up, my room was dark, and I had the TV on, so I left me TV. The door opens, and I turn around, and I was just like, I'm naked, can you close the door? And he's just standing there, like, peeping in. Why the fuck are you standing there, peeping in my fucking room, and I'm sitting here naked? So, I tell him to close the door. I put my robe on, this exact robe. I open the door, because it's like, what the fuck do you want? You just came over here and physically attacked me yesterday. I brought you some food. So we're not going to acknowledge what the fuck happened yesterday. Got it. So, that was the last time we spoke. I haven't spoken to him since 4th of July. It is July 29th. I haven't talked to him the whole fucking month. Pops up yesterday, angry as fuck, about the fucking window being open in the morning. I got up at 6 o'clock in the morning one time. It was like 6, almost 7. And I opened up the door. I let my dog go out use the restroom. And when she came back in, like she walked or whatever, came back in, I left the door open because I'm like, my first appointment is at 8. I'll close the door when my first appointment happens. But this place needs to air out. And the morning air is the coolest. Cold air helps de the disinfect shit. So before 8 o'clock happens, my sister gets up to the dog out and closes the door. I'm like, okay, whatever. Now the door is closed. These motherfuckers go and lie and say that I left the door open all night. When did I ever leave the door open all night? I opened the door when I got up in the morning to get some food at 7 o'clock in the morning. The door was open for less than an hour. And everyone's talking about I'm lying. No, y'all's comprehension skills are fucking off. Y'all going back fucking lying. Getting this man the fuck to hype up. And guess what? I'm the one getting physically abused about it. And y'all want me to give a fuck about y'all's feelings no so he comes over i already know we, we're not talking i already know what the fuck's happening when i hit the knock on the door i was just like who is it and in his angry ass voice it's dad and it's just like all right i literally was trying to buy myself some time i was like i'm too tired for this he gets so angry i called 911 twice because if you call 911 they will come to where the, the phone um what you call it the location of the phone okay so i called 911 twice put the phone in my robe pocket and opened the fucking door open the door they're mad at the fact that my dog ran the fuck out yelling at me to put the dog up and just standing in my doorway standing in my doorway right there standing right there in my doorway and then it's getting mad that i don't want to step outside of my door. It's like, I already know what the fuck's about to happen. Who willingly wants to step into a domestic violence situation? Nobody, especially when the last time I saw you, I told you I was pregnant. And you didn't give a fuck then. So that makes you think you're gonna give a fuck now. You're not, but you did. So, aggressive as fuck, literally pulling me around fucking everywhere, pushing me into the table, threatening me with the 1800 fucking alcohol bottle, Punching me in the face, like literally my whole face on this side. My whole face right here on this side, you can see. It's swollen. Like, it's swollen. All of this right here is swollen. I got punched right here. Okay? Then he gripped my fucking head, like to take my bonnet off. My hair, I had just braided it. It was flat. You can see all the fucking frizz from when he pulled the fucking. Like, look at my hair. My hair looks fucking crazy. So like I was saying literally physically attacked me then um in the mid the middle of the fucking argument the cops showed up thank god to stop the fucking abuse and there's a whole debacle so I'm sitting down literally sitting down cops coming in and out of the fucking house he's sitting outside Explaining stories back to fucking Thanksgiving Back to Thanksgiving upset at my reaction to a friend popping up for my birthday like literally just shit that a female would whine and complain about it's just like 
but you're a grown man in your 50s. The fuck do you care about how my reaction was for somebody popping up? And <laughs> you don't know this. I was actually vlogging, so my entire reactions on there and what was happening before, which had me fucking silent as fuck, is explained in the video. So, <laughs> literally, my sister came in thinking it's about to stop this video. It's not, because after the whole situation, she left with her dog, my mom left, again, didn't do anything, and then he left, and before he left, with the cops sitting right there you know we're done right i am assuming so i told you i was pregnant you didn't do anything literally i'm on the ground he's on top of me on top of me on top of me he's like 200 something pounds i am barely 100 pounds on top of me and you're gonna sit here and say i hope you know we're done right the cops were called i would hope we would be done. So, we knew about this, about the fact that there is absolutely no support and no help for domestic violence survivors, like none. I researched it back in college, nothing happened then. Like we go and look at the policies and everything. I researched it today. You call the police station, they have you call the courthouse, they have you call domestic violence hotline, and everybody just sends you in loops and sends you in circles. So, the point of this video is, one, to truly acknowledge the fact that you guys have already known, have talked about, talked about it before, I am a domestic violence survivor, okay? And in the first video, I didn't want to air out who it was by because at that point it had stopped. And... I had gotten to a point of forgiveness. But here I am 30 and it has started again. So from this video, you can compare it to the first video. We all know now who it is. Okay. Two, there has got to be something done that truly t protects domestic violence survivors because there is nothing done. There's nothing. In the middle of a situation when the cops are called, you're up and away explaining what the fuck's happening, making sure you're still safe because the, the person's still there. You forget to ask about or do any research about an emergency protective order. So then when you call the police station, they tell you you have to call the courthouse. When you call the courthouse, they tell you to call the police station. They literally just send you in a bunch of circles and loops and it's just like, yeah, but my life is at risk. Same with my baby, okay? And it's just like everyone wants to sit here and try to convince me that I'm not pregnant. Explain all the changes that my fucking body's making. I literally have a fucking baby bump, and I will insert all the fucking pictures here. My hips are growing. Literally, my body is sore. Right now, my body is sore for multiple reasons. My body was sore yesterday. So fucking sore because literally my hips are growing. My ribs are expanding. Like there's literally parts where you can literally see them extrude, like, protruding out of my fucking body because my ribs are expanding. My hips are fucking growing. I have pictures and fucking videos. Like, explain that to me. Explain my body going through those fucking changes. Okay? So, my body was sore yesterday because of that literally my fucking knees are doing the pregnancy kneecap thing and if you know from if, if you've ever been pregnant knows when pregnant what the fuck I'm talking about my like literally everything about my body has changed I'm, I've had the heat flashes I've had the valerigo I think that's what it's called a vertigo whatever it is like when the rim spooning and all that shit I've had that like the increasing of peeing the hunger all of it the nausea I've had it fucking all Y'all want to convince me what the fuck's going on with my body. And y'all don't even know y'all's own body or know your motherfucking self. And you're going to try to tell me about me. Okay. So, there needs to be something, there needs to be something done. Because if someone's calling in fear of their fucking life about being fucking attacked and the cops have already came out, what are you doing to protect them? Nothing. Literally nothing. Literally nothing. They just send you in a bunch of circles. 
like my whole body right now is so antagonizingly sore outside the fact that it's growing from the fact that I'm having a fucking child my body is sore because I literally was tossed pulled and thrown to the ground by a grown ass man who claims to be my fucking father and sat on top of me and threatened me with a fucking bottle and got mad when I wanted to walk out of my own fucking front door like and then my sister now is walking around <laughs> turning on her fucking taser I have a taser too I will call the cops so with that being said this is here so if something fucking happens to me you guys know why this is not how I want to tell you guys I was pregnant so I want to do that in a much better fashion Lydia was setting everything up to take photos today I wasn't going to post them until later I literally was setting everything up to take photos today. I already picked up my nail color. I already picked up my outfit. Everything. Am I in the mood? No. But. Here we are. So. Yep. I love you guys. And I will provide information down in the description box down below. That will attempt to help you. If you're a domestic violence survivor um, because they don't really help I know that's so cynical but they don't really help um, so yeah I will provide the information and if you are a domestic violence survivor I am sorry for everything you've gone through I am here with you and we will get this figured out I promise you before my last day here on earth, I will have some kind of policy changed for domestic violence survivors. That is a fucking promise. Cause I've been dealing with this shit for way too long and no one does anything about it. Everyone wants to get mad at me. And it's like, I'm the smallest one, literally the smallest one in my family, the fucking shortest, the skinniest, and I've been abused the most. Everybody wants to get upset with me for how I fucking act. Well, I haven't felt protected my entire fucking life. Like, huh? Huh? Everything I've built, I've built by myself with no help. I'm like so confused in everybody's fucking reactions. Like, it's absolutely fucking absurd. It is truly, truly, truly absurd. But, that is my video. And, yeah. I also know for a fact my phone is hacked and I'm being monitored. My ex, who I haven't even fucking talked to and I don't know how long, has my location. How? Because I didn't send it to him. Right. So, yeah. Every single time I start vlogging, if someone's at the house, as soon as I start vlogging, they come back. So. Yep. And uh, that's all I have to say. So, I will see you guys in the next video. Yeah, yeah.